r slash ask reddit what harmful things are being taught to children not owning up to their mistakes or blaming them on others also there's nothing wrong with saying i don't know that's the beginning of true wisdom even better i don't know but i can find out what to think instead of how to think i love this and wish it was higher up i tried finding the study that i'm thinking about but i can't seem to find it on google the gist of the study was that they took two groups of kindergartners one group of kindergartners was given a type of toy and specifically told that it makes noise the other group of kindergartners was given the toy but not told whatsoever what that toy does the group that was specifically told with the toy does only played with the toy to make it make noise the other group that was not told what it does was able to play with the toy and found that the toy not only makes noise but lights up stretches etc the conclusion of the study was that when children are told something rather than letting them figure it out themselves they're less likely to work out problems and experiments for themselves i strongly believe this feeds into adulthood with standardized testing and multiple choice questions i don't know what an educational system without those types of tests would look like but I certainly hope we continuously work towards improving a teaching style that has shown to limit problem solving skills. Edit. Thank you you slash tishtok for finding the study. Study here apologize if I summarize anything wrong. It's been a while since I've read it. Edit 2. Here is a link to another comment with different, but awesome, source. Edit 3. Yet another comment with a source for the study. Thank you guys for providing these sources for everyone. Edit 4. A friend of one of the authors of the study commented and linked the clearest version. Link to that comment here. I've long felt that no one should ever fail a test. If you get answers wrong you should be required to find the right answer and correct it. Repeat until you get everything right. With whatever additional instruction is required to get you there. It is not important to know the right answer all the time on demand. It is very important however to know how to get the right answer. How to understand why something is right or wrong. And exceptionally important to learn that it is okay to be wrong as long as you correct yourself. I feel that grading tests the way we do, at least in the USA, causes people to be programmed that being wrong is bad. And that causes people to fight incredibly hard to never admit they were wrong which leads to quite possibly most of the rest of the problems we have with our society. Being wrong is bad. That's why many people don't change their mind when they were given trustable sources. They don't want to be wrong. If you want to always be right, change your mind. CGP Grey Edit. Spelling. High school teacher here. This all damn day. So many kids don't do anything because they're afraid of making a mistake. How else are you going to learn? It's really sad seeing a kid get so relaxed when I say, mistakes are okay. How to internalize stress and implode as teens and adults. True story, my parents used to make fun of me when I cried. They even created a mock song to sing whenever I started crying. So guess what? I stopped crying. 27 years later, I can't cry at all and I can't tell others about my stress levels without getting upset. Open bracket. BTW, my parents are really nice people, but I was their first child in the early 90s. So they didn't really know how to deal with a crying child. BTW, my parents are really nice people, but I was their first child in the early 90s. So they didn't really know how to deal with a crying child. Parents can be really nice people but in the end, they are just humans too. I don't think anyone can say that they have the perfect parents who never did mistakes. I know a lot of people always say, well I would never do as a parent if I was a parent but then they do something else what is also stupid. Being flawed is being human. In a nasty divorce, the parents may only talk about each other's bad qualities and the kid, s, may have an issue issues with their parents. Yep, my parents, especially my mom, only ever say you're just like your other parent when it's something negative, led to some serious self-esteem issues that I am still trying to work through into adulthood. Jesus my mom did that for years and it was so goddamn manipulative. I show that I am upset or pissed you know you remind me of your father thanks mom. Ducking thanks edit for my father is a extremely supportive and caring person who never said anything about my mom after they spilt. They had problems but he kept it between them. 
Double addict my mom was a good and pretty supportive mother but never moved on from the divorce and dealt with her anger in a bad way. I don't hate her. We have talked about it as adults and she sees how what she did was negative on me. That failure is bad. Failing should not be considered as an obstacle but a step in the learning process. Demonizing the failure and stigma associated with it makes many children lose their interest once they fail. This but also the humiliation that comes with failing. If failure is to be considered a learning process then people need to be taught not to laugh at the people who have failed. Not just the humiliation, but also the shame associated with failure. That they shouldn't question an adult. So true. Because of that logic many kids think that every adult is responsible and trustworthy when is reality it's clearly not the case. It was a really weird thing going through college because I began to think more for myself and question adults. It makes you realize how complicated the world is because as a kid you assume exactly as you've said. You do not have to play with everyone. There is a total lack of social accountability. If Laura is always cheating a tag it's okay to not let her play. If little Billy throws sand in the sandbox little Timmy does not have to play with him. Laura and Billy need to learn how to play appropriately. My son's preschool has a strict you do not have to play if you don't want a policy. No one has to play with anyone they don't want to play with. No one has to to hug or touch anyone or be touched if they don't want it. No one has to share their toys or other school supplies if they aren't done with it. In fact the preschool teacher will go over and referee and say is Bobby done with the toy car? Uh, no. Then Mikey, you have to wait until he is done. It's pretty refreshing. I wanted to let you know there are new philosophies and my son's preschool really strongly teaches body autonomy. Your body is your own and no one can touch it or make you do anything with it without your permission. It wasn't official policy but we had a lot of discretion in the daycare I worked at. I did almost all the things you listed in the post. Some of it was a conscious effort and some of it was natural. I remember at first seeing the surprise on the 3 year olds faces when I said no. Timmy does not have to give you that toy. And wouldn't you know, a week into the routine and the kids wouldn't fight. I think telling kids that you can just walk up and take something because sharing causes more fights. They are tiny humans and they deserve to have some agency. Saying no to unwanted touch. Saying no to other kids who are bothering them and not telling them to get along. And I had the best behaved class. Anecdotal but I know it mattered. Children do learn about sex at a young age. It just isn't usually in a productive way. I know I did. My own experience. Questions like this are why I believe in being infinitely clear with my kids. You are going to hear total crap from other kids. If you hear something you don't understand, come talk to me. You can ask me anything and expect a decent answer. And I would give examples of the total crap I had heard as a kid. Most of which would result in pregnancy. Son. Age 6. Daughter, age 7, riding home from school, daughter says Tiffany said she had sex with my brother, which left me a grand total of 3 minutes to gather my wits before we got home. Okay, do you guys know what sex is? Blank looks. Sex is when you take off all of your clothes and rub privates together. You can make babies that way. Looks of shock and disgust. Do you think your brother had sex with Tiffany? No. I think she was using a really bad way of trying to say she likes him. And maybe she watches the wrong TV shows where if people like each other they always have sex. Were my kids really ready for a sex talk? No. Not really. They didn't care. Did we really need to have one about then? Yep. My job as a parent is to be there to put things that come up in context for them. Not run around after them deciding what and when they need to know things. This is something I will always stand firm on. If the child is old enough to ask the question. They are old enough to know the answer. Do you need to sit down and draw a diagram and pull out textbooks when they're 7? Probably not. But if they're asking questions about misinformation they're hearing from other kids. I'm going to do my best to be honest and answer in a way that they will, hopefully, be able to understand. I was in nursing school when my kids were little, and they loved looking through my textbooks. They'd ask questions. I'd give age appropriate answers. We never had the talk, but it was just kind of ingrained into everyday conversation if something came up. The best was when my son, who was in second grade, asked me what a boner was. My daughter, who had just had her first sex ed class in 5th grade, piped up and said, Oh I know, that's when a boy has a really happy dream and he ejaculates in his bed. 
Not only did I have to keep from laughing, I then had to explain erections and wet dreams. In the 3 minutes we had in the car, always in the car, before I dropped them off at school. Happened to my son in middle school. A kid sucker punched my son. My son then fought back and pinned the kid against the wall. He has long arms, and punched him a few times. The school called me and my wife and told us our son was suspended. We went to the school and they said even though multiple witnesses as well as the kid said he threw the first punch that the school had a zero tolerance policy so our son would be suspended. We asked what the school believed our son should have done and they said he should just walk away. We told them that he would not be receiving any punishment at home and that the policy was ducked up. That's for their insurance policies they don't give a damn what happens to the kids in that scenario as long as they don't get sued. That's a bingo. No is a bad word. It's a strong word but not a bad one. I could never tell an adult no growing up because it was a rude word. Becoming an adult is weird. It took me a while to realize I could change things about my life that I didn't like or were making me unhappy and literally no one would stop it or tell me I couldn't. No back talk. Many adults use it as you're not allowed to challenge what I have to say. Makes sense if it's a cranky toddler being negative for negativity's sake. But suddenly older children can't question things or raise valid points of their own. My parents stayed at my house for a few weeks while they closed on their new house. And this subject came up. I told them how stupid their mindset was to this growing up followed up by 20 plus examples of times if they had listened to me as a kid we would not have been in shit situations. I hope every time they started arguing you yelled. This is my house. No back talk. Just to get the point across. Teaching them that it's not okay to fail. Some people need a little more time than others. It's okay to not get something now. Kids should be given more time to process things. Imagine having a poor grade because of a low score from the beginning of the year. How can we show children that it's not pass or fail? It's try and improve? And if kids go into software development, or many other fields to be honest, they are going to struggle with the agile methodology of fail often, fail fast, fail better. They can become perfectionists which runs very counter to a fast changing, quick delivering culture. Perfection is the enemy of done. When I was really little, my parents made sure that I knew failure was not an option. I did kind of follow what they said, but I think that screwed me up later in life though. Nobody cares about children's teens issues. Well it's only going to get worse from here. You think school is hard? Have you ever paid a ducking bill you're just a kid you can't feel this way? It breeds an emotional disconnect from parents and their kids, and makes kids feel alone in their emotional struggles. That nobody cares because they are not adults and they don't have adult problems. Listen earnestly to anything your children want to tell you. No matter what, if you don't listen eagerly to the little stuff when they are little, they won't tell you the big stuff when they are big. Because to them all of it has always been big stuff. Catherine Wallace. AKA someone who knew what she was talking about. Kids are starting social media so early these days, and I think that's very dangerous because it puts a lot of pressure on the kid to attribute their worth to their social media success. I also think parents are way too open with their social media when it comes to their kids, and it's totally a violation of the child's privacy, of which some parents will never admit. The amount of parents I see on social media just sharing everything that happens in their child's life is astounding. Maybe Bobby doesn't want everyone to know that tried out for the school play but he didn't make it. That may not be a big deal to you but Bobby might be really upset right now and having everyone his mom knows giving opinions on the subject probably won't help. It sucks even when a parent is just verbally going off about what's going on in my life without asking, let alone posting it online. One of my parents bragged to everyone I was going to her private university for law. Later on we decided I couldn't go BC or the cost. Now having to have that discussion with everyone they'd told was exhausting. Now imagine that shit stain on Facebook Lomeo. Probably not harmful. But in kindergarten we were prohibited from playing soccer because it was too dangerous. We were kindergartners. We probably would stand there and kick the ball. Not go full on FIFA or shit. Edit. What the duck? Thanks for the upvotes guys. You slash Dark Helix grew up to be Sergio Ramos. It's either him or Pepe edit. I meant Pepe. The Portuguese defender who played for Real Madrid alongside Sergio Ramos for a handful of years. 
both equally ferocious in their defending techniques. Little girls get told all the time that boys are bullying them because they like them. I got told that all the time. I knew it was bullshit, though. I was an overweight kid, I had glasses, I had acne later on. I knew the boys were picking on me because that's what kids do when they don't like you. Besides, the girls were doing the same thing. When I finally had someone like like me, in college, really, he never picked on or bullied me. That's the way it should be. Simply put, the main motivation of bullies is to find someone below them to use as a punching bag to assert their stature. Boys don't cry, let the damn boys cry. One of my favorite things about football, soccer, is that despite how masculine it is, there are plenty of times where fans and players have cried and generally, people don't make fun of it, losing a final, getting relegated, accidentally causing a bad injury to another player, giving away a 3 goal lead against Palace when you still have a chance of winning your first league title in decades. Football is surprisingly open to boys crying. I remember Sun Heung-min's face covered in tears after he accidentally broke Andre Gomez's leg in the Spurs vs Everton match last year. The injury was bad, but Sun looked like he had just murdered someone. I felt so sad for both of them. I personally hate when I hear parents telling their kids white lies to stop them from doing something. Or white lies to shield their kids from anything bad that happens, like a pet dying. Then they grow up not knowing how to deal with a lot of situations. My parents told me my cat went to Florida when it died. I was on a school trip at a petting zoo and saw my cat doppelganger and apparently had a freak out trying to reclaim him. The teacher thought I was insane because I kept screaming that's my cat he's back from Florida. Funny story to tell though. If you have a different opinion than someone, you hate them and that's wrong. Also, People seem to be taught this incorrect notion that every disagreement has to be an argument. So backing down, admitting that you were wrong, or changing your mind are considered losing. It's totally fine to change how you feel about an issue when presented with new information. It doesn't make you weak. Bullies are only bullies because they feel insecure about themselves and you should sympathize with them. Duck that. If someone is being shitty to you then they don't deserve your sympathy. If you don't fight back, they'll get bored and go away. Problem. No, they don't. If you fight back, they'll respect you and leave you alone. Problem. No, they don't. If you come talk to me, I'll get it sorted out. Problem. No, you won't. The last one was the worst. Pretty much every teacher I ever had said that and I don't remember a single case of bullies being stopped by teachers. The kids who got bullied at the start of high school, which is 5 years in the UK, were the exact same ones still being bullied at the end of it. You show me respect first because I'm an adult and have authority then I choose whether I should show you respect no other way. There was a Tumblr image going around a few days ago about this. I don't have the link. But the text is, sometimes people use respect to mean treating someone like a person and sometimes they use respect to mean treating someone like an authority. And sometimes people who are used to being treated like an authority say if you won't respect me, I won't respect you and they mean if you won't treat me like an authority, I won't treat you like a person. And they think they're being fair, but they aren't. And it's not okay. Making children hug or kiss someone, usually a relative. That they are uncomfortable with is not good. The child may just be grumpy and or not wanting to show affection or their warning bell sensors could be going off and they do not know how to communicate that. Plus forcing them to hug kiss sends mixed messages about personal physical boundaries and affection itself. Hug this. I've always disliked too much physical contact and people would always act like it was blasphemy that I didn't want to give them a hug. That complaining is the same as not being grateful. Can't count the number of times growing up when adults basically told me to shut up whenever I was complaining about something and that I should be grateful that I was born where I was. Like sure, I'm glad I wasn't born into some starving African family. But that doesn't mean everything is perfect over here and that we shouldn't try to improve things here as well. I agree. That mindset causes people to become complacent and apathetic with life so they never strive for improvement. Not just their own lives. This kind of thinking is often brought up in politics. Yes, I'm glad I don't live in a war zone. But no, that doesn't mean we shouldn't change a thing here. I would say what's harmful is what's not being taught. Yep, 
Wish they had a whole lot more personal finance classes in high school. I teach personal finance and the how my course is deemed the red-headed stepchild of the school oh they could just do it online self-paced. Where they learn nothing. Oh my course is all on the computer so you can make up a semester of learning in a week. What the hell logic is that? Parents tell me they are glad their kid is in the class. I tell them to go home and emphasize that to their student because the students are so ho-hum about it the only thing I wish is that I could really take my course from theoretical to pseudo. We'll have every kid have an actual job and pay them bi-weekly. Take taxes from them. Make them pay bills and rent etc. All these things would be with monopoly money but there's aspects of this concept that require so much micromanagement on my part that it would make it really difficult plus then I'd have to contend with school and county policy on certain things. Like why did student X get a zero for paying September rent me? Well he didn't give me the monopoly money so he didn't pay his rent them. Well if he gives it to you now, me, okay but with a late fee them. But he doesn't have that much me. Okay I'll add that to his next rent payment but the grade in the grade book can only be why because it was late them. But he paid, me. There is so much cool personal finance stuff that teachers can do but it's hard if you can't really treat it like real life admin. Cause they're students not adults me. Yes students who we are trying to help develop skills to become hard working adults. She's younger than you. Just let it go. Can't you be more compassionate? You're the older one here in this situation she's a little child. She doesn't know any better absolutely hate this information that was drilled into me since I was a kid at it. I think children under the age of 3 are an exception to this though. I was referring to the 5 12 year olds who could get away with stuff because they were younger. I don't give a duck that she's 6 and I'm 6 and a half. She pissed in my duck I'm Lego bin. Edit for clarity. The kid who pissed in my Legos was the kiddo of my stepmother's co-worker. Oh my god are you stealing what my mom said word for word? For years my siblings would act like little shits and I'd get in trouble for actually fighting back. How about instead of getting me to be compassionate you teach them to be less annoying? I think what we're not taught is more harmful. For example the fact that we never learn. At least in my country. How to fact check things. Good will win. Evil will be punished. There is no karma. Some people will do all sorts of shitty stuff. And be successful and happy. Other people will do good. And will end up with cancer. My favorite saying. No good deed goes unpunished. So you saved me from choking to death? Well. My rib kinda hurts now. So have a ducking lawsuit for $200,000 damages. Oh. And by the way, I work at the IRS. So surprise, you're audited. Political views. At ages that children are really too young to understand them, they just spout off their parents' thoughts. The worst part is they repeat them and hear the same political views so much that they internalize it. When they are older enough to question it, they then have an identity crisis because the things their parents said don't make sense when examined a little further. So like anyone else when your views come under scrutiny, you dig a deeper trench and pretty much develop an unspoken pledge of loyalty to your political party. Edit. Obviously this doesn't happen to everyone, and many people grow by questioning the world views they were taught as kids and come out with a more well-rounded opinion on different issues. The original post was asking about negative things being taught and so I was in a pessimistic mindset when writing this. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.